I am here with a king. Lucky me. It's my lucky day. Uh, my name is Ian Utili. I'm the CEO at Attention Live. I also help Pete Erickson co-produce uh, some of the things that happen here at the Voice Summit. We're here in Arlington, Virginia, right near the heart of D.C. I'm here with Sean King from Veritone. Sean, please uh, introduce yourself to me. We're going to get to know each other. And all of you are welcome to listen in on our private conversation that we're having yes, publicly. Please join us. <laughs> um, no, I'm Sean King, so I'm the SVP of Commercial Services for Veritone. So I run our commercial teams that manage and utilize our technology to service our customers on behalf. So we have a few different uh, parts of our business. A Veritone One, which is an agency uh, that uses our technology to help brands navigate audio and influencer strategies. A content licensing business that allows us to take content from marquee libraries like CBS News and Masters and US Open and make their content available to uh, secondary and tertiary licensing opportunities. Right. And lastly, uh, why I'm here today is our launch of Marvel.ai, which is our synthetic voice product uh, that we use for you know commercial groups. Now, Marvel just came out publicly in May. Correct. Now, you've been at the company for about five years? Correct. Okay, so can you just, for a little background mm -hmm. for me, let me understand, you come to Veritone, what attracted you to the company, and what's been the experience from initially coming till Marvel? Let's just talk about kind of, I'll call okay. that comic book 101, so I, I can just understand a bit about your background sure. as we have this conversation. No, so I came to Veritone because I was really passionate about the technology that they were building, which was AIware, which, you know, the core thesis was like, we want to democratize artificial intelligence to groups, okay. you know, and there is an inherent amount of bias to AI in general, where More. it's, you know, I'm set to do one job, I'm going to do it well, I put something else into it, I may not be able to get the same output. Right. So how can we make sure that we have benchmarks and we have a, a, a best in breed of multiple cognitive engines across a wide variety of, of applications mm. and making sure that we can orchestrate premium outputs across that. And so being able to, you know, that's a very long winded way of saying that we bring a lot of structured to unstructured data. Yeah. We make audio and video binary, searchable, indexable. Um, and there's a lot of different applications you can do with that, specifically in media and entertainment, but mm. also in government and in regulated industries and energy. Uh, and so for us, like for me, that was really exciting because I could think about just all the different things. I'm like, wow, if I had this, what could I do in advertising? Mm. What could I do for content? What could I do for all these different areas? Uh, and that just kind of, you know, got me really passionate about, I'm already passionate about media, but yeah. then what else we can do? And, you know, how can we be disruptive to kind of these legacy businesses mm. and legacy types of media to keep, you know, growing brands and growing and creating new opportunities? Mm. Uh, so fast forward today, you know, talking about Marvel and kind of like synthetic voice. Yeah. And you know, I want to make sure it's clear of like synthetic voice or voice cloning, not deep fakes. Because, uh, you know, fundamentally, I'll just try to cover this real quickly. The difference between, yeah. Take your, take well, your time, you have my attention. <laughs> <laughs> the difference between synthetic voice and a deep fake to us is fundamentally is consent. Okay. And so we do so much work with influencers, with podcast hosts, with radio hosts, with all of these groups where brands are leveraging their trusted voice to help mm. give a new experience or a new talk about their brand, yeah. you know, to help leverage that audience. How do you deal with consent if somebody's deceased? That's a great question. And so we've talked to a lot Obviously of Obviously there's chat, chatter this year mm -hmm. about things like Anthony Bourdain's documentary, which yep. it wasn't even a lot of content. It was a few sentences. Correct. It wasn't like they used his voice to narrate two hours or something, but there was still chatter around he's deceased. Mm -hmm. And even if he has somebody with power of attorney or they own his voice, he didn't get to say yes. And so where does, where do you stand personally? And mm -hmm. is that different than where your corporation stands publicly? Well, no, I, that's a great question. And <coughs> Uh, where we stand and, I, and, and where I stand on this is, look, everything fundamentally comes down to consent. Mm. And we're ta we've talked with many different estates and we've talked to many people that unfortunately will probably be leaving us soon, but they want to be able to pr uh, preserve their voice. Yes. Because for many of these people, that's their instrument. That's their revenue source. Yeah. And how can I make that so that my family can continue to earn, that mm. we can continue to contribute? Uh, so from our standpoint, it's who has consent mm -hmm. for, for those? If someone has consent to be able to do something or to give something of mine away in the future, my wife, right. you know, they should be able to give consent to my voice because mm -hmm. that was that if I had given her power of attorney for that. Uh, that's one. The second part is then consent of the training data. 
Okay. You know, do, who owns the training data? Is mm -hmm. that owned by a studio? Is that owned by the individual? So those are two areas that we have to navigate through. Mm -hmm. And if we can make sure that there's a clear path where we know that we have consent to create the voice, yeah. but then that we have proper consent from the owners of the training data mm -hmm. to be able to do that, then that's kind of our like dual authentication. Right. But if you're a live person coming in to do that, it's a similar thing. We have to collect the training data. Yeah. We have to get your written consent, but then we also need your verbal consent mm. because we want to make sure that, you know, there's there are biometrics to everyone's voice. Right. And that if you're hearing my voice and then I'm providing you training data, then we're needing to make sure that when my, my consent statement matches my training data. Mm. So, and that's matching my signature. How about for people that have lost their voice but are still alive? Is that something that there's a, um, a rhythm by which your company would navigate. So Val Kelmer, mm -hmm. you know, it's, he had a recent documentary. Obviously, it really gives a lot of insight into who he is and specifically the impact of him losing his voice. Mm -hmm. And so I think he's already pursuing different things. I'm not sure if he's ever talked with Veritone or, any, or if there's any connection, but how do you deal with someone? They're alive. Mm -hmm. They have all this previous data, in his case, movies <clears throat> and things of that nature but he can't really create new yep. uh, material to work with. So is that a one-off situation or is your company Veritone thinking of that and is Marvel the product th considering that as like that's a big part of oh. the world and we want to really serve that, especially the celebrity aspect of somebody like Val Kelmer? Oh, absolutely. I mean, again, and in our heritage kind of in advertising and in voice and content management, mm. uh, you know, we know we have the right expertise to be able to manage that. But for that thing, you know, if you're a voice actor, your voice changes over time. Right. You know, my voice today was after all the talking yesterday is different than what it was yesterday. <laughs> right. Uh, and that's the same for as you grow in age. And so, you know, if you're a voice actor and you're in your prime, mm. you want to make sure that you have a replica of that prime, yeah. that you can continue to use that because you might not get the same aspect to be able to use that in 10 years from now. Right. And so we think that that's an investment on their part that everyone should make and everyone should own their clone. Yeah. And so let's talk a bit about Marvel. So Marvel comes out there's some excitement around Marvel as a product, the fact that it's not some new startup, it's inside the Veritone umbrella. Um, so there's a sense of trust, there's a sense of dependability, there's a sense of heritage and legacy. And so individual people that are interested, um, small teams, huge global 2000 corporations, who's the target? Is everybody the target? Like help us understand as a community, mm -hmm. who are the right prospects to connect with in this industry? Well, I mean, everyone is, we think anyone who's a person I feel of prominence that is a notoriety should have their clone and okay. should be able to own it. Um, you know, I think just from an IP protection, from being able to making sure that, you know, you're in control of the outputs that are coming from that. You're right. having that. So we think anyone should uh, be able to have that, that, you know, needs to be able to have that. But again, if you're, you look at it for an advertising use case, mm -hmm. for example, you know, thinking about radio or podcasting, mm -hmm. you know, how many different ad reads am I going to have to give on any given week? You know, right. I may not be a A-list celebrity, right. but I do, I, I make my living doing a ton of ad reads, right. but my output, if I have to go in the studio today and read 400 outputs, right. am I honestly going to give you the exact same quality at mm -hmm. read four that I'm going to give at read 365? Right. No, I'm not going to be able to, but being able to have that for, I mean, even just utility purposes like that. Mm. Uh, I mean, there's just, there, there's so much opportunity there. You think about it from, you know, an author that may want to be able to narrate their, their own book. Mm -hmm. uh, they may not be trained to be able to do that, mm -hmm. but hey, I could get into a studio and produce maybe 50 minutes of content mm -hmm. uh, that I could use to create a synthetic voice. Right. If that's the case then, like, look, I could be able to do this. Uh, you think about it from education, from real estate, from... Uh, there's just so many different areas that you can mm. do it in different avenues that, you know, we use our voice every day for all sorts of different purposes. Mm. But as a human and a live person, we're only as extensible as ourselves and our mm -hmm. time. So being able to have that uh, option to be able to make yourself that much more extensible, you know, you can create more opportunities as a result. So <sighs> what's in it for Veritone? long term if you're giving up the IP. So if this is ultimately like a work for hire type of scenario, I come in and I say, I'll give 15 minutes in the studio, I'll pay the X fee, and you say, it's your IP, you own it. Uh, JP yesterday was talking about non-fungible voices, right? So this is your non-fungible voice. Um, what's the win for Veritone? Because Veritone's a corporation mm -hmm. that's in business to make money and to 
build revenue that grows over time. So I think without the understanding of why Veritone would set the standard of the individual owning their IP, there might be questions around like, well, what am I missing? What's in the fine print? Help us understand that part. Oh, perfect. Great question. Uh, thanks for asking that. So very to be very clear, the voice itself, like your sound, like that's my IP. The the technology that is used to create the synthesis, the, the, mm -hmm. that synthetic voice of that, that is Veritone's IP. The platform The platform itself, the, the yeah. Software. The software. So if you make your How voice about the use with Veritone, of it? so we'll, we'll get to that. So, you know, I, I have the IP of my voice, the sound, my okay. utterances. That's yours. That's mine. Okay. The technology that's used to create the synthetic clone of mine is Veritone. So okay. if you cannot take your synthetic voice away from Veritone and have it work on another platform, Okay. So if you want to, you'd have to, you know, decommission your voice in which okay. we would destroy it. But so Veritone owns the technology. Now then the myself, if I wanted to give you access, I would have to sign a, a consent form that I would see. basically say, I'm giving consent to you to use my synthetic voice. And so, then at that point, you're constantly just, you're paying for the output and, and the usage of it. So in, in, in plain men's terms, mm -hmm. right? In like a simple way for people to understand it. So what I hear you saying is, I come into Veritone, I do 15 or 51 or hours of time recording my voice, whatever it takes, but you say 15 minutes. I then create basically a synthetic voice. It's not a deep fake because it has my consent to be created. Veritone's technology through the product Marvel mm -hmm. is creating this on my behalf. Veritone owns the technology, mm -hmm. I own my voice. Mm -hmm. My voice that has been synthetically created mm -hmm. by Marvel, mm -hmm. I cannot take that and do other things with it outside of my relationship with Veritone, nor can Veritone take my voice and use it outside the relationship that we have together. Correct. Is that a joint venture? Is that a consortium? Is that a licensing agreement? It, it, How does that function in terms of the two parties being able to get benefit from that relationship? Per perfect question. And, 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 and perfect question. So easiest way to describe it as... It, it, is a, it is a business relationship between Veritone One and the, and the voice owner, yep. where that person has paid Veritone to create a clone of their voice. Right. So Veritone has it. We hold it with the utmost integrity and security. Hmm. No one has access to do that. We cannot use it to create clips. The only right. person that can use it is the creator, who is the person who owns their voice, until they give authority for someone else to use that. Whether so, that's a one-time, uh, one-off, or it's an exclusive, or for correct. a period of time. Okay. If, if they say, I want to have Warner Brothers create something with my voice, right. great. There's a business relationship between this individual and Warner Brothers. Okay. And if that being the case, they're giving Warner Brothers access to be able to use their voice. We've documented, we've cleared that. There may be many opportunities in which maybe one of our brands or one of our content partners would say, hey, I understand you have this person's voice available. Would I be able to do that? We could absolutely facilitate that for them. With their permission. With their permission. Do they have to have your permission? Does who need to have, who? Uh, let me uh, give you an example. Mm -hmm. um, some famous person mm -hmm. goes to Veritone, creates a voice. And for the 2024 uh, presidential campaign, uh, this person wants to have their voice used for the Democrat or Republican Party. Um, would Veritone ever say, no, 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 we're not getting involved in politics? Or I'll give you another example so we can have some more content to sink our teeth into. They go, we, I want my voice to be used for this Christian nonprofit or this Satanist organization. And you say, no, 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 we're not playing with religion or no, that's whatever. So are there boundaries by which an individual is not given the latitude to go structure relationships and you would say, we are not doing anything with politics, we are not doing anything with religion, et cetera? Yeah, that's a great question, and especially in the times today. Make me feel very good. You keep yeah. telling me I'm asking great questions. <laughs> Although, I'm no, like, but there, this, we could talk about this for hours, <laughs> I mean, candidly. Uh, you know, that's, especially in the times today, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Right. And, and at the end, look, we, we may have many personal and business moral ed problems with how people and what people are doing with it. Yeah. But... At the end of the day, what we're asking for when that person is given consent to a third party to use yeah. is an understanding of the use case that they're using it for. Okay. Because at the end of the day, we're seeing the outputs and we're seeing what's coming through. Because it's going and, through your system. Correct. And we just want to make sure that nothing nefarious is happening. To How do that. you, dis who decides what's nefarious? Okay, so. Well, so well I'd say for that point, okay. it would be the person whose voice has been cloned. But what if that person believes that they want their voice to be used for what your corporation would define as hate speech. Mm -hmm. 
Because that's yeah. thrown around all the time. Absolutely. So would your corporation say, no, you can't use it in that well, way? Well, it, it, it also depends on if that person would like to see outputs of everything pre-cleared before they send it to us to send it to the third party. Who does the clearing? The clearing on that side, it's us. So just like, and this comes back to our content licensing business, if someone wants to license a piece of CBS News for a major motion picture or for a documentary, right. we give them access to be able to view the clip, we give them access to be able to see it, but we need to see that clip in and how it's being used, hmm. and we send that back to CBS News. CBS okay. News then gives us the clearance for that use case. And I then see. at that point, the transaction's complete. And it's a similar process on this with voice. Does Veritone bring opportunities to the table? Absolutely. With our, especially with our Veritone One right, and our advances from that. Right. It's like, yeah, there's going to be opportunities for those where, hey, my, I, my normal person is not available. I need to be able to create these outputs real quick. Or I understand you have XYZ celebrity that would be really great to be able to use. You know, we're not just saying, okay, great, here you go. Mm -hmm. Saying, what would you like to use it for? What's the case? What's the terms? Let us take this. We can take it to the voice actor and see if they're allowing, we'll allow you to use it for this use case. And so have... Are you public about how many voices you've created with Marvel? Correct. Yeah, we I believe over two, I'm looking for Ashley, 215 Okay. plus. So one of the 215 XYZ celebrities, mm -hmm. um, have any of them given a certain amount of use to be commercially used without them having to verify, sign off, listen, just like any project X, any project that... Not to that, no. Okay. We've not had something that's been like blanket, clear slate, here you go. Everything has been exceptionally controlled as okay. it's specifically for this, for this type of situation. So everything's a one-off at this point? Correct. Okay. It does. And we I do see. have others where they've taken, we've had voices that are just like standard stock. We consider okay. them stock voice that's there on the platform. You can go in and use that. Like if an you Alexa wanna... or Siri voice. Exactly. It's not XYZ celebrity. It's, it's not Jane. It's not Joe. Or I just it's want just some voice to voice. be able It's to... a woman's voice from the UK. It's a man's voice from South Africa. Yeah. Okay, I see. And yeah. so you have those that you can use your own because they belong to Veritone. Exactly. I see. And you want to be able it's to your you can use that. You can absolutely use that. Or okay. I need... I need to get this output in Spanish or in French or in, you know, Mandarin. Uh, mm -hmm. You can create those, and, and those are available for anyone to be able to come in and, you know, sign up and be able to use online. Uh, because in how those were set up is those voices are just, they're ours. They're created. We own mm -hmm. them. We can go ahead and process them as we see. So my company, we wrote a white paper. So we've translated the white paper written uh, like into half a dozen languages, and we've recorded, I think, five of those half a dozen with individual humans. We have started the process of another hundred uh, written translations that we like to process. Mm -hmm. So if you have turned 15 recorded mm -hmm. voices. So if I wanted to come and say, we'd like to pick this celebrity to read our uh, white paper in English, mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming that that's a thing I could have a conversation, although it may be too small to even no. uh, entertain. How many of the 215 voices are not English? Uh, a, a good majority of them. They okay. can be both. They can be English and or a different language. Could you take a celebrity's voice, like an Earl Jones well-known voice, a Morgan Freeman well-known voice, and could you have them speak another language? Absolutely. Absolutely. So maybe not. Well, give me clarity. I come and I say, I want Morgan Freeman assuming he's one of your 215, to read our white paper in as many languages as possible. Mm -hmm. And you say yes, and Morgan Freeman says yes, and everybody's happy with mm -hmm. it. What can my potential expectation be in terms of if Veritone and Morgan Freeman are happy with the contract, how many potential languages might I be able to use Morgan Freeman's language on my white paper for the purpose of commercial uh, over, publishing? Over 80. That's amazing. And so for a real life example right now, and you know, one of our clients is here with us, Brian Barletta, he has a podcast called Sounds Profitable. And he does a lot of work educating the podcast community about all the fragmentation and all the growth and just, you know, you're wanting to be a podcaster, you're an advertiser in the podcasting space, you know, you need to understand this. So he does a lot of white papers, he does a, a weekly podcast, a weekly article hmm. all about trying to educate the community and so with that you know he's partnered with us we take his podcast as soon as it's created and he's an english speaker right we, we've downloaded our ai where technology translates transcribes it then translates it into spanish and then runs it through marvel so his voice then is speaking spanish and so okay. he makes this available so his podcast is available in both english and spanish sounds like him and it's it's his voice that you can hear it 
Is he one of your 215? He is one of those, but his voice is just only for, for his usage. I understand only. that. Yeah. Okay, can we go a little deeper on this? Because sure. I'm very, very interested in, 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 in this concept of what you're doing. So in the case of the English speaking podcaster that's outputting in Spanish, mm -hmm. he makes his voice, it belongs, his voice belongs to him. The ability to use the voice that was created on his behalf by Marvel belongs, the tech belongs to you. Mm -hmm. You have an agreement that he can use that to create Spanish output mm -hmm. for his podcast. Okay, I got that. There's a potential, obviously with cost, of someone like a Morgan Freeman's voice, mm -hmm. if he was one of the 215, being able to be output for as many as, not guaranteed, but as many as 80 languages across different content as long as there is agreement. You talked about transcription. Now, you may or may not be public around this, so you can choose not to answer the question, but do you have your own transcription technology? Like, do you have a competitive product to a DeepGram or to a RevIT or to a Temi, or do you leverage one of these existing uh, partners? No, that's the beauty. Everything that we process through is on AIware, which is part of Veritone and our parent company. So it is your own transcription yeah, tool? Yeah, so we, it's have, all we have all the sorts of cognitive capabilities and functions, okay. and both of those are created. And then we do have third-party engines that we brought on board because at the end of the day, our goal is to have premium outputs. Yes. And if you know someone's voice is maybe a strong New England accent versus maybe a Southern accent versus, you know, one of our engines may not give the premium output. Maybe it needs okay. a Speechmatics or something else or one of the other engine partners mm. uh, to work through. Then we can process whatever we necessarily need to. It really doesn't matter to the end client as long as the output is premium. Hmm. Well, I feel like I could just ask questions forever, <laughs> but. Uh, for being sensitive to the audience that is watching this live. By the way, thank you for your attention. Or if you watch the archive of this, congratulations, you found it. Um, maybe we should come to a close. And so let me ask uh, a, fi a final question, and then maybe you could kind of give a call to action in terms of what should people do if they're interested. What for you in 2022 are you most looking forward to uh, when it comes to Marvel as a product? And why is that the thing that is your North Star this upcoming year? For this year, for, for myself, it's all about localization and personalization. Hmm. And I think that's what I'm most excited and passionate about with Marvel is, look, being able to personalize content to anyone. Like to point, Morgan Freeman, I would love to have James Earl Jones you know, read my email to me. Right. I mean, not right. that he would do that, but look, I was a big Star Wars fan. I'd love right. to have Darth Vader read right. my emails right. every day. It'd be fantastic. <laughs> uh, but look, if 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 I'm a a, a, a podcast or a radio host and I've, you know, I'm nationally coveraged, but to be able to have something quickly and easily saying, hey, to my listeners in Dallas or mm. Arlington, I appreciate you tuning in. Yeah. You know, being able to give that personalized touch, and especially if you're an influencer. Localization or, and personalization. Correct. I and I think that's, and that's extremely important for a brand as well. Mm. You know, and, and to be able to, you spend all this time and money acquiring a customer and right. bringing them in. You want a sense of continuity. Mm. Like the same voice that maybe read my ad is the same voice that I'm hearing when I'm on my customer service line. Yeah. Maybe it's the same voice that I'm having when I'm interacting with those. Being right. able to just have that consistency of comfort of you know making sure that there's a sonic identity to mm. my brand yeah and voice is definitely a part of that well i think uh i'm happy i got to interview you i learned a bunch in this car i'm like this is fascinating i mean i've heard a lot of things around this jp was telling me a bit about what uh, your team had been working on mm -hmm. and he tried to go in depth but i don't think i really comprehend at that moment, like why he chose for Vixen to partner yeah. with you and, and what the what the goals were around it. I think I have a much better understanding at this point uh, based on our conversation. Mm -hmm. How about a call to action? Like what should the audience do? The audience is watching today, they're watching tomorrow or yeah. in a week or a month or even a year probably doesn't matter. It's probably a similar call to action. Mm -hmm. They're interested. They are a celebrity. They want to be number 216. They know a celebrity that would want to be number 216. What do they do? Well, celebrity or not celebrity, we want to be 216 or 525. Uh, we want to talk to you. So, you know, log on, go to www.marvel.ai or, or to veritone.com, you know, contact us, you know, call me, call Ashley, call someone on our team. We're happy to touch. Uh, at the end of the day, if we can do nothing more than educate you on this technology and what it's capable of, that's a win for everyone. Wonderful. Everyone, I'll be back again and uh, hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did. Okay. See you soon.